Welcome back to Creative Excuses, where we make excuses to be creative out of the video games that we play. We're back with another build video, an update to my first ever build video, the Arcane Archer. This build is one of the first builds I used to clear veteran Battlefront Hollows, and now I'm using it to push for 300k score as an Oaken Soul build without being a heavy attack build. The build is super simple to play and has two basic setups for different kinds of content with a bunch of other variants for other stuff. It is perfect for solo veteran arenas, some soloing normal DLC dungeons, and soloing overland even up to an entire hero storm. Remember though, this video is not a guide for the sets, skills, or any of that. For the detailed guide, check the video description where you'll find a link to the build on Outcast's build editor on esohub.com. The written guide there will include both the Vatashran score pushing setup and the overland slash dungeon solo setup. For the rest of this video though, I'm gonna walk you through how the arena variant of this build solves some of the problems with my personal best score pushing in veteran Vatashran Hollows. Before we jump in though, go ahead and hit that like button for more fun builds like this one. It really helps the channel out and it pumps me up in that YouTube algorithm. Also, if you ever want to hang out or chat about my builds or videos, I live stream over on twitch.tv slash creative excuses. Right now on Wednesdays, my wife Shelby and I are playing through Spider-Man Remastered on PC together. And then on Thursdays and Sundays, I play ESO, mostly making and testing builds, banging my head against a wall, soloing dungeons, and hosting a dragon hunting event most weeks. I'd love to see you there. All right, let's jump into it. First, the theme for the build. This is the Arcane Archer, one of my very first builds and my very first build video. That video was in my old style, which was a lot more boring, and the build was a simple bar build, which I still stand behind as a fantastic style of build for newer players. It got me one of my first Vet Vatashran clears because it was so simple and plenty effective. But a lot has changed since then. Now we have Oaken Soul, which makes simple bar builds a bit less necessary, and hybridization has changed how we use Magicka from being about sustain and healing to being about a lot more. Now we use Magicka for damage to increase our crit chance, for some healing, and for sustain all at once. Hybridization plus Oaken Soul really changed this build up. The original goal was for a sort of hybrid stamina sorcerer modeled after a Conjuration Archer in Skyrim that I played a long time ago. And we're still doing something like that, but with a bit less conjuration. But the theme really isn't that problematic. So what are the problems that I've faced with this build while pushing for new personal bests in veteran Vatashran Hollows while still sticking with this theme? Honestly, there have been a lot of problems, but there's one that I think is the most interesting, and it all focuses around two skill slots and one set on the build. We will call this the dot problem. Now, why only these two skill slots and just one set? Because the rest of the build is pretty much settled. The theme says that we're a bow user that uses magic, so that's gonna give us snipe and crystal fragments because snipe with the Vatatron bow hits like a couple of trucks, and crystal fragments is the sorcerer's excellent and interesting semi-spammable, which somehow hits even harder than snipe when it procs. Crystal fragments also gives us access to a little mini heal from a passive, and it boosts our critical chance by 6%, which is essential to the build. Then we have crit surge, because over 3k healing per second is incredible for only taking up one skill slot, and it beats out anything else you can put there. So three skill slots and two item slots are already taken up. But we're also using Oak and Soul, so we are only left with nine armor slots left. So why not slap a monster set on and then add in a two-piece crit bonus set? Storm Fist and two pieces of Storm Master will do for that. That's gonna leave us with five armor slots left, which is just enough for a five-piece set. And we have two more skill slots. These three choices then are essential to get right on the build. Now, for the two skills, they can't be spammables, right? Since we already have a wicked strong spammable in Snipe, and a wicked strong semi-spammable in Crystal Fragments. They have to be damage over time skills, and thus the dot problem. So what are our options? There are two categories of options that we can choose from. You've got your area of effect dots and your sticky dots. AOE dots, or area of effect, are skills like Arrow Barrage or Unstable Wall of Elements, which place a damaging area on the ground where enemies standing in it take damage. Sticky dots are a little more complicated, 
they can be a damage over time effect applied to an enemy or they can be a damage over time effect centered on the player that damages enemies around the player these categories are especially important in this situation because of how their damage scales aoe dots that get placed on the ground generally last 10 to 15 seconds and according to the update 35 patch notes they have a damage coefficient of 1.4 after that update I'm pretty sure that this coefficient is comparing it to a standard ranged spammable, but it could also be a standard melee spammable hit, so it's, it's kind of odd. But this means in general that over the duration of the AoE damage over time skill, you should be getting about 40% more damage than just casting your spammable. It's important to note though that skills oftentimes come with secondary effects that buff the damage of the skill a bit, or provide some other utility. Here's the rub though, we're using a Vatashran bow empowered. Sorcerer passive empowered, bow passive empowered, focused aim as our spammable. We've invested quite a bit into making our snipe hit insanely hard, and the problem is that our snipe hits harder than that 1.4 coefficient. I've recently learned from an offhand comment in a Skinny Cheeks video of all places that percentage boosts in ESO are additive, not multiplicative. This means that our snipe, when used properly, has up to like a 63% boost in damage thanks to our bow passives, the Vatashran bow set, and the sorcerer passive that boosts physical damage. This is amazing for our spammable, since we cast it so often on an Oaken Soul build, but not so great because it makes so many AoE dots a damage loss to cast. Basically, whatever that secondary effect on the AoE dot is, has to be really strong, otherwise the ability will only be just barely worth casting or will actually just be a damage wash in a single target fight. In my experience in testing, most AoE dots end up being a wash with our spammable. One cast is only worth the same or ever so slightly more than our spammable. One notable exception to this though is the bow AoE dot, Endless Hail or Arrow Barrage, which are slightly better than other AoE dots available to us because they also get empowered by the bow passive Hawkeye that we're going to keep up with our light attack weaving. What about sticky dots though? This is where things get interesting. Sticky dots, according to that same patch note from update 35, now have a much higher damage coefficient overall. Their new damage coefficient is 0 0.105 per second, lasting for 20 seconds. This means that a sticky damage over time skill should deal roughly the same as 2.1 spammables in a single cast before any extra effects on the ability kick in. In our use case then, these should be our target for use, right? Probably. They seem like they have the best chance of being worth casting over snipe. So what dots did I actually choose? How did I actually solve this problem? I tried a ton of different dots, honestly, pretty much all of them that I could think of. At first, I settled on a combination of Hurricane and Razor Caltrops. This was, and still is, a solid combination. Razor Caltrop seems like an odd one to settle on though, right? All it does is provide major breach and a fairly crappy damage over time effect. Yep, that's true. But that damage over time effect is just enough damage to make the cast only a slight damage loss that the massive major breach debuff more than makes up for. The interesting thing about Razor Caltrops though is that it actually is a damage loss on this build to keep up 100% of the time. So much of the value of the ability is coming from that major breach that it is better to cast it every 14 seconds in the rotation right as the debuff wears off rather than every 10 seconds as the damage portion ends. There are defensive circumstances where you want to keep it up 100% of the time, mostly so you're guaranteeing a crit every second, but mostly cast it every 14 seconds. I did try to get rid of Caltrops though, I really did. I thought that the pitiful damage on it was bad enough that running Night Mother's Gaze as my 5 piece set with a stronger dot would be better, but nothing else really worked. I generally gained more from running a better set with Caltrops than running Night Mother's Gaze with a better damage over time skill. Hurricane is a great ability for this build though. It gives you extra movement speed, which is great for going fast through Vatashran, and the sticky dot on it is one of the best dots I could find because it is both area of effect and a sticky dot, so it gets that bigger damage coefficient. And yet, if you watch my score run of Vatashran on this build, you'll see that I don't have Hurricane slotted at all. But you do see it on my solo Harrowstorm video. 
Why? Hurricane's value as a single target dot is pretty good. Its value as an area of effect dot is amazing because it does all of its excellent single target damage to everything around you. But for a score run of Vatashran, the best way to go fast is to keep moving. The problem with Hurricane that I kept running into was that it moves with me, and I'm not always in range of the enemies I want to be hitting. In fact, there's a good bit of time while pulling all of the enemies that I'm not in range at all, so though Hurricane is amazing, and I would 100% run it if I had a 6th ability slot, it just does not work super well for this specific use case. For solo hero storms though, that movement speed is essential for kiting enemies and reducing damage, while still dealing good damage. So, while score pushing, I desperately looked for ways to improve my damage in places where I could save time. I looked for better AoE dots, I looked for better sets, I looked for everything. I tried running Venomous Smite, Unfathomable Darkness, Night Mother's Gaze, Order's Wrath, Pestilent Host, and probably more that I'm forgetting about. Nothing was working while I kept using Hurricane. Then, I learned about the coefficient stuff that I explained earlier, and why Hurricane was doing so much better than other AoE dots. I had an idea. What about Poison Injection? Poison Injection would benefit from the same 25% bonus as Snipe from the bow passives, so it would keep its same relative value as a damage over time skill. It would also be an execute, helping me clean up some of the hardest parts of the dungeon where the last bits of the fights are the most dangerous, and it would give me a quick instant cast ability to both pull enemies and to finish them off really quick. This is the skill that allowed me to push up to that 300,000 mark. It changed everything. While Hurricane would be a great skill once I already had all the enemies pulled together, providing way more AoE damage once everything was grouped, Poison Injection could deal damage the entire time I was pulling enemies, and was easier to use to pull those enemies over Snipe because it was instant cast and doesn't slow my movement speed while casting. It was great when I tried it, and I was convinced that it was the key to pushing to 300,000. But I still had a problem. I was using Venomous Smite as my one five-piece set because it gives great crit chance, and has a proc that hits really hard in a much larger AoE than Pillar of Nern. The proc doesn't hit quite as hard in a sustained fight as Pillar of Nern, but it hits just as hard in a fight of 10 seconds or less. The problem is that if the target that has the proc on it dies, the proc goes away and you lose that damage. So sometimes it's great, but other times the damage goes way down. But Pillar of Nern wouldn't be great when pulling enemies, I don't think, because enemies are chasing me as I sprint. So they move out of the proc before it gets applied, and the damage would also then be lost. Also, the AoE effect on Pillar of Nern is tiny, so it's unlikely to hit enough of the enemies to be all that relevant during the ad pulls. So I kept looking for sets, and I remembered one that I thought could be interesting. Sheer Venom. If you're not familiar with Sheer Venom, it applies a dot that scales higher in damage just like an Execute. The dot lasts 6 seconds, and it is only applied by damage from Execute abilities. Most Executes are direct damage, so that 6 second timer is usually not great, and you usually aren't using an Execute during the whole fight, so it's not a great set outside of PvP. However, our Execute actually is a single target dot that deals damage for 20 seconds. So maybe, just maybe, it'll reapply the Sheer Venom Dot on its own. I went and farmed out the set over a couple runs, gave it a test, and it worked. It almost doubled the damage of Poison Injection and turned it into an almost one-shot kill on many of the smaller adds in Vatashran Hollows. It was an amazing discovery for me, but it wasn't quite enough damage yet. I needed just a little bit more for those pesky adds. While I was doing my research, trying to get better to nail this 300,000 score, I read through the comments and descriptions of some videos of score pushers hitting like 315,000, and one of them specifically kept saying that they were using two charged daggers on their builds, which I thought was pretty interesting. I was using Precise for the extra crit chance on my bow, because I didn't need the Sundered status effect from Focused Aim, or the Overcharge from Crystal Frags, which were my only two skills at the time with a reasonable chance of landing status effects. Hurricane and Caltrops are both physical damage and their status effects are Sundered, which is great if you need minor reach, but I didn't, and they also have an abysmal chance of triggering it to begin with. But 
with poison injection on the build, I had access to a much better status effect from the much stronger poison damage type. The charge trait would buff the chance of triggering that poison status effect significantly and would also almost guarantee burning from my flame enchant every time it goes off. So my interest was peaked. I gave it a shot and the damage was so good on the ads. The significantly increased chance of the poison status effect added a lot more damage to poison injection and pushed it over the top as the strongest skill I can use to pull ads. It turned out that the combination of a charged, sheer venom empowered poison injection was the key to pulling that 300,000 score because it made clearing out those ads so much faster than anything else I tried. This took me literally months to nail down. I worked on this all through update 35 and now a good bit of update 36 and I could not be happier with this build. I have a few variations of it that I use for different content, but the Sheer Venom Arcane Archer feels fantastic, and it's one of my favorite builds that I've ever played. It is not nearly as powerful as my Heavy Attack Warden, but it is still a very powerful build. The next step for me on this build will be to farm out a few other sets to see if, by switching sets for the boss fights, I can pull like 302k or higher. Then, I would like to farm out some other sets to see if I can get a setup to work for veteran DLC dungeons. Get subscribed to see if I can manage that. Until then, you can find all the setups that I use for this build in the video description at the build link to esohub.com. I'll see you all in the next excuse. Avoid, mother. We did not summon such a creature for this challenge.